Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, we're gonna be diving a bit more into that data object that we had in the last video. We're gonna do some customization options, and we're gonna show you how you can do all sorts of little cool things with your data. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of this console log we had up there. We obviously don't need it at this point. Now, what I wanna do is, head to our graph here. As you can see, it's instantly responsive. Now, the first thing we wanna do is make a point here. What I wanna do is I wanna to head to my HTML and let's just go ahead and throw a div in here. Now, this is maybe going to seem a little obvious to some, but it might be necessary. So let's go ahead and just have a div here. And now in here, I'm just going to add some inline styles just to say width is going to be equal to 400 pixels, okay? Now, I'm just wrapping this this canvas in a div, and you'll notice when I refresh, we do get the chart acting responsive. So this chart is going to, even though we're giving it a width and height here, it's going to respond directly to the width of its container. So let's say if we had this width be something like 90%, then you can see when we shrink this, the chart shrinks. I mean, this is great because out of the box, it's responsive and we don't have to do anything to make it responsive. So it's one of the best features of chart.js is that you don't really have to think about it. All you need to know is that it's going to respond to the container with itself. Super cool. So let's actually take a look at our data. You'll remember in our main.js, we had our line type, we had our data, which was an object, and then inside of that, we had labels and data sets. Now you might be wondering, what's up with this? Why data sets? Well, data sets allows you to have more than one set of data. And in addition, we can control the visual look of each of those sets of data. So if we were to, let's say, copy this object here, this entire object, and let's go ahead down here, add a comma, and then paste it in. Obviously the, the uh, indentation is off here. We could just say my second data set. We can give this a fill of true. We can give this a line tension of zero, which we'll see in a moment what that does. And you'll notice we can have some background color values. Let's go ahead and give this background color. We have RGBA. Let's change this 192 to another 75 here. I can't predict essentially what colors is gonna be, but as you can see, it's a nice purple. So if we go ahead and do that 72, 72, 72, just like that, super cool. So we now have two different colors. Now, in addition, we can change a whole ton of different stuff. So let's go ahead down here to our data, which you'll notice is the each plotted point in our data. And let's just go ahead and modify these values so we can very clearly see exactly what's going on here. And we can leave one of these as the same. Perfect, okay. So let's check this out in our browser now. And as you can see, some initial things are very different. One. We have a fill where we said, hey, uh, up top in the first one, we said fill false. Even though we had a background color in here, like if we were to say fill true for this one, we would, uh, we would see this transparent teal background color overlaid. But, you know, it, we can simply just say false here and get rid of that. So we can get rid of that color entirely because we're not using it. Okay, refresh, and as you can see, we don't need it. Nothing changes here. And another thing you'll notice is this line tension. We have these very sharp points here. Even though we're going from 80 or 100 to 20 and back up to 60 down to 20, you know, we we have these sharp here where here these are nice and curved. Now that derived from this line tension. Now you'll notice it's at 0 and 0 0.1. Let's see if we set this to something like 0 0.5 for the purple second data set, you can see it's even more curvy than this one. So if you want just like a nice little edge off, 
so it's not as sharp as possible, you can go ahead and say 0.1 and you'll get something a little bit more like this. If you do obviously want something that is nice and sharp, then you're gonna to wanna to keep that setting at zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of this line tension entirely. You'll notice when it's set to zero, we have these really sharp ones. If we get a line, if we get rid of line tension, you can see it's curvy. So if we want something that's not totally curvy, we're gonna wanna go ahead and make sure we have that tension in there. So if you'll notice, when we're editing these things with the colors or with the lines, you notice everything is a border color, or border cap, or border dash. And you might be wondering, well, what's up with the border? Like, uh, this is a line, not necessarily a border. However, to get more of an understanding of this, you have to understand that these are essentially shapes being drawn on here, right? And this line is the border here. So anytime you see a border in this data property, it's going to refer to, well, the border of the shape. And in this case of a line graph, the border is the line. So even though we're doing a line graph, you're not going to be seeing line dash, line joint style, that sort of stuff. Now there's a ton of options here, and most of these are totally self-explanatory. Uh, but let's take a look at what happens if we add another data point here, so we can add a 50 onto the end of the first data set, and we can refresh this. Now what we get here is, well, we have January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and it goes off. It, 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 you can see it goes up. You can see there's more data there. So how can we increase this set? Well, if you scroll up, you'll notice we have all of these labels and we end at July, and we can go into now and add an August. Okay, and let's go ahead and refresh. And you'll notice that upon adding this, it does in fact instead extend our graph further. So the length of our labels here is going to define essentially the length of our data, which is visible. Let's say we get rid of all the way down from Let's go to March here. Now we only have three visible. Let's go ahead and refresh. And you'll notice we only have three data points visible. So your labels here are gonna be determining that length. And that's important to know if you're ever trying to figure out why things aren't showing up the way you'd expect them to. But as you can see here, we have our data object it contains data, labels, and data sets. And I'll fix this uh, indentation off screen. There's no use in watching me do that. But as you can see here, we've now dove into a little bit of these options. And, and you should have a good understanding about what all this stuff is. Now, what are all of the different options you have? Well, under every single chart in the documentation, if we select this, the first thing you'll see is data structure. Now, data structure isn't referring to the data itself as in the, the values but it's referring to everything from the label to the access ID, the line tension, the background color, the border style, all that sort of stuff. So everything is, every one of these options falls under the data structure section of the documentation here. So you have access to change any of these things and there's a nice little description about what they are in case you need to know and what they accept. So as we dive into more and more different styles of charts, you're gonna be able to see yourself customizing this more and more. But as you can see with the very minimum we've done already, I mean, if you pass this, the data numbers in an array and you pass it some labels and some values here, you have a really beautiful looking chart without doing anything and the rest at this point is being set through these sort of data options here cool so this is the data set object in chart.js you can see this is where you're going to be spending a lot of time customizing how your chart looks cool so in the next video we're going to be exploring the options that the charts has in this particular chart is the line chart so we're going to be exploring the line chart options now as a challenge to you i'm going to see if you can get this chart to go down to zero. Right now, it's extending from 20 to 100 because that's where our data is going. But how can we get this chart to go all the way down to zero so that we have some space underneath these valleys here so these valleys don't look like they're at the very bottom? So at the start of the next video, we're gonna cover the answer to that challenge. But between this video and that video, see if you can get the chart down to zero.
So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, if you comment the video, hit me up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. I'd love to hear from you. If you want to watch the rest of these videos before they're available on YouTube, you can become a Level Up Pro for $8.99 a month or $95 a year, or you can purchase these outright if subscriptions aren't your thing and watch them streaming at store.leveluptutorials.com. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.